Welcome to Elevate, a Women's Leadership Institute podcast where we showcase stories, celebrate successes, and shift culture. Hello, and welcome to Elevate. We are here with Sherlane Quayle, uh, founder and CEO of the podcast Power Lane, and we are so excited to have her. She has been a big advocate of WLI and a friend and a supporter for a long time, so Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. It's fun to be on this side of the mic. Yeah. This is my first time. So thanks yeah. for, you know, bringing the rookie in. <laughs> I'm hoping she'll give me some tips because she's a master <laughs> podcaster. So well, if you haven't listened fatty. to Power Lane, check it out. Thank you. Um, we always like to start with, tell us something that people might not know about you. <sighs> um. I've had people tell me that I always come across as really confident and peppy and approachable. Mm -hmm. And what I think a lot of folks don't realize is that I also am an introvert in some ways Mm -hmm. and I need my downtime and I have to recharge. And that doesn't always come out in general. So that's something I think maybe I don't talk about very often. Yeah. Um, And that uh, maybe it's not so many people know about me. I can appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I love to be around people, but there's times where I'm like, nope, yep. no people right now. <laughs> yeah, I just I just need to, you know, curl up on my couch and yeah. do my thing. And recharge. Yep. Read Very a book, good. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to jump into a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, you came from St. George. I came from Salt Lake to St. George and back to Salt Lake. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yes, you live here currently. Uh-huh. Um, when you were in St. George, St. George is experiencing a lot of growth. Mm-hmm. And so part of your time there was working with the city. Do you want to just share with us what that was like, how you managed the growth, the housing, all those kind of things? Yeah, I would love to. That was such a fun role. I started with the city in January of 2019. So I'd already been in Southern Utah for like seven or eight years at that point. And I'd already worked with the city before I was employed there. Okay. Um, I worked with Mayor Pike and um, President Williams at Utah Tech on sort of the early visioning for Tech Ridge. Um, okay. I was working with USTAR at the time, yeah. and they were just, the city was just thinking about Tech Ridge and what they could do on this mm. really unique piece of land. And so the mayor brought me in to help organize. We did a bunch of focus groups with a, a lot of community and business leaders to really identify what tech meant in yeah. St. George because we can't really create a vision if you don't really know what you're creating a vision around. Yeah. And, and was it was it there are a lot there were a lot of tech companies there or you were hoping to bring in the tech industry to St. Yeah, George? Both. Okay. So I what we what we learned mm-hmm. and what ended up happening with the Tech Ridge vision is and just you know, the tech economy in general and the the entrepreneurial ecosystem in general. Yeah. In St. George is um, and Southern Utah is um a, a, a mix of both so we had growing tech companies sure but it was still a young economy in that regard mm-hmm. and um, we wanted to also then bring it be able to attract companies in so that we could expand and activate the entrepreneurial culture there especially around science and tech mm-hmm. in a more um, meaningful and strategic way and so that was kind of what came out of those okay. those conversations yeah. Um, and then, you know, fast forward, that was like in 2015, that those early, early conversations started happening. And then um, 2019, I started with the city and it was, it was like one of my, at the time, I was like, this is my dream job. Like, I got to work with people I absolutely respected and loved. Mayor Pike was amazing. Mark Mortensen, you know, Danielle wasn't elected yet, but I ended up getting to work with her. I mean, mm-hmm. I could just name so many people that that would take the whole time of this podcast. <laughs> um, it was an incredible job. And I was the economic vitality and housing director. Mm-hmm. And I got to, I was hired by Adam, the city manager. And he's just an amazingly thoughtful, kind, visionary leader. You know, mm-hmm. his whole thing for our, our staff and the culture was we are going to be and we are and are going to continue to be a world-class organization. And that was true from the way the council worked with the mayor to the way the staff supported each other. Like mm-hmm. it was a really amazing culture to move into. And so I felt at home right away. Yeah. And, you know, I was hired because I think differently about economic mm-hmm. development, sure. traditional economic development. I'm very focused on the entrepreneurial innovation ecosystem building okay. and the pieces that are required to do that, both, as you mentioned, from the companies that are already there and, and kind of growing there and yeah. going to grow there. And then also from the, you know, 
experienced and and those who want to expand Mm -hmm. um, and move into this amazing space. And so um, also very much about bringing in the arts as they pull more Mm. towards economic development. And I learned a ton. I learned a ton about housing, you know, St. George's housing crisis, as they said, was... um, a major challenge when I came in and I love that the city connected economic development and housing in yeah, the same role. I love that too. Yeah, it was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a huge role, but it was so fun for me because I didn't know so much about the housing side. And so mm-hmm. I got to just do a deep dive and we started the housing action coalition, which is still going. It's a group mm-hmm. of community um, leaders and businesses and both government and private sector all working together, developers, realtors, everyone mm-hmm. to really look at what, what housing means and needs to look like in St. George going forward. And, and they, they do a ton of really great work down there. And so that I got to, you know, be a part of starting that. Yeah. And um, it was just really, it was a really, really cool role being in an executive position mm-hmm. in local government. There was a lot to learn in that regard. Yeah. Um, so I loved it. I loved it. It was, it was fun. It was um, the, the, the tone changed a little bit with elections, and I'd never expect I experienced that before. Mm. Local elections, local elections, okay. yeah. So I got to grow a lot mm. through that transformational experience that was happening at the city. All of us, as you know, staff and some of the elected officials were experiencing that as well. And so it was a it was a really interesting time to have been able to be there and see the juxtaposition between, yeah. you know how it was when I came in and how it was when I left. And even now how it's, you know, shifted. I've been there, been gone almost a year. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I loved it. And I especially still have so many deep friendships. You know, every mm. time I go to St. George, I, yeah. I get to connect with all my, <laughs> all my friends from the city and in general. And so that part of it is the most meaningful piece. I love that. And I want to touch on the part you said, because I've heard this from other women as they've served on community councils, or I talked to a woman when she lost by 12 votes, and I said, why didn't you run again? Um, Because every time a council changes over or people change, like the dynamics change, and that can really affect whether you want to be there or not, whether it still fits you or not. Um, And I think you had such a unique place because you weren't running for office, but you still got to see how the community and everything worked. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. And it wasn't something um, that I ever could have anticipated when I went into it, you Mm. know. And I think that one of the things that I learned from that experience was that I just had to trust myself. And that might not always look the way other people want it to look. And it might not always, um, might not always, it might not always be easy, you know, to do from a personal or professional space. But I I do believe in handling ourselves with grace as much mm-hmm. as possible. And in difficult situations, um, I try to really, in that space, try to really keep the focus on what needed to be done, what, you know, our employees were struggling. Mm-hmm. You know, our staff was like, there was a big transition and we mm-hmm. were all like navigating that, that sure. transformational space. And trying to keep the team together and keep morale up and still navigate that in an effective way with a changing, you know, changing direction, yeah. even of here's what we were doing and now we're doing this. Yeah. And so um, like wrapping your head around that, you know, is, is even a, a big piece of it. So um, we just, we have to trust our guts mm-hmm. and we can all overthink things so no I never you know, overthink I know, Come on. me either I have <laughs> no idea what that feels or looks like um but but even overthinking it and looking back yeah. I I am really I don't think I would have handled it any any differently you know and that putting, says a lot about you like you. that's amazing yeah it's it's there's been a lot of you know evaluation and analysis over yeah. the last year to really yeah. think through that and and putting people first mm-hmm. putting you know, the values that I hold dear, um, staying true to those and trying to navigate that as much as possible and connect them and align them with the organization as the organization is seemingly in some ways moving away from those values. Not true, yeah. you know, across the board for sure. Um, those are all really interesting things to experience. And it also helps you cultivate, I think, friendships and relationships in a really new deep, yeah. meaningful way. 
for sure. Yeah. So sure. it's was, it was great. And, and, you know, from a leadership perspective, you always have to just reflect on your own experience <laughs> and your own why. Mm-hmm. And like, how, how do I, how, how, when, how am I going to feel about myself at the end of this day? And I want to feel good about how I treated others and mm-hmm. how I, you know, held myself, et cetera. And so um, that was an interesting part of that experience but still really good, you know, yeah. silver linings exist yeah, of everywhere. Course. Of course. Yeah. Um, as you were speaking, it reminds me of like company takeovers, layovers. Yep. I mean, not layovers, but layoffs. <laughs> yep. um, we've talked a bit about on the podcast about change management, mm-hmm. handling when it changes, handling when you get a new boss with a different perspective or people on your team. So I think that's really timely. And I love that you talked about um, making your decisions based on your values. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes when we talk to women, they aren't, they aren't sure what their values are or which ones are driving them. Yep. Um, so is that something you knew before this transformation or as you had to work through this change and everything, it kind of came to the top so you could make good decisions for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've had many opportunities to identify and decide what my values were before that time. Sure. Um, both professionally and, and personally, you know. And so I was pretty strong and clear on what was okay for me and what wasn't okay mm. for me. And um, and how also pretty clear on all the different ways I could try to navigate within that mm. to still make things as good as they could be and make yeah, things you know, it's not even always better. black and white right yeah make, like try to be a positive and be a positive force and make a positive impact um yeah. within that within that situation and that environment and within my value range and so i i knew what that was but i had figured out those because of other mm, you know so smart challenging times yeah. in my own life in my career etc and so i think that one of the beautiful things it sounds kind of cliche but I really do believe that those times of hardship, they help us clarify those mm, values. They can, so they can help us if we're open to that, you know. And I think that's yeah. one of the things where that's why I love leadership. It's mm. like it's like shines a spotlight on the opportunity to like, I mean, I <laughs> do you tell how positive grab, she is. She always I'm has grab a great onto this spin. opportunity to like <laughs> learn something from this or understand myself or other people better mm-hmm. or whatever the case might be. You know, I do think that going through these types of changes can definitely highlight if you're aware and open the things you value most, because yeah. I think most of us just go through our daily lives thinking, yes, I value this. I value this. But until you have some self-reflection on it, you know, it's yeah. a little different. Yeah, it 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 has to be intentional on mm-hmm. some level. And yeah. autopilot sometimes is really nice. I know. <laughs> and it's also sometimes nice, again, to just crawl into a hole and mm-hmm. not want to deal with any of it. Right. You know, there are times when it's like, I don't want to reflect on much. this. I yeah. I just don't, I don't want to deal with it right now. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it doesn't come back around, you know, when you're in a mental space or whatever, where you can then think through it and, sure. and feel through it. So, And the ability um, to give yourself grace and space yeah. to do all those things, right? Which is can be really like that can sometimes be the most challenging part of the whole, the whole absolutely, process. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think especially for women, yep, yep. I know that men experience that as well, but just that space of like figuring it out. Yeah. Figuring it out and, and making space. I have a really good friend in St. George who's always talking about just make space and be okay with sitting in the dark. Mm. Like it's okay. Mm. You, can, you know, you don't the, have to have it all figured out. Shine. The light doesn't shine in the light. The light shines in the dark. So mm. be okay sitting in the dark and, you know, and then the light will start to filter in. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. There's so nothing I to be rem- scared of. I remembered that a lot over the last mm. little while. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Um, let's pivot to WIN. Okay. Women's love Influence um, Network, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Tell us a little bit about what that was. So is. Is. Still yes. going. Um, yes. I, I moved on. I'm still on the board, but um, I'm just in an advisory capacity or a it's not even advisory. It's more just like cheerleader. <laughs> um, so when started as the Women's Influence Center, we started it, um, Pam Palermo and I, she was the CEO of the chamber in St. George at okay. the time. Mm-hmm. She and I co-founded it. Um, so was it a physical location? You say center? We were located at the at the chamber. Okay. And um, it was all about, we, we started this work in like the summer of 2016. 
Okay. We both realized that there was a gap in St. George for women. And this was sort of a, I've learned, this is a cyclical Hmm. thing, which I think happens in a lot of communities, um, especially small growing communities. Sure. There had been groups of women who had come together over the years. Yes. And, you know, they created this foundation for when to be able to be created by yeah. us and thrive. And so um, we created it. We launched it in March of 2017 at the first Ignite Your Influence conference. Yes, Ignite. Okay. Pat Jones and Susan Madsen mm-hmm. were our two keynote speakers okay. for that event. So yes. they were right there in the mix of it from the very beginning. <laughs> Um, and then we've had annual Ignite Your Influence events. It's one of the premier mm-hmm. events for Southern Utah women now. Um, COVID messed it up a little bit, but we stayed yeah. on track for the most part. And um, it happens every February. And it is just a, you know, a really unique experience. It's a really unique conference. It mm-hmm. mixes sort of all the pieces of women. We try to really look at, you know, we're a prism in a way. Okay. And we, it's not just about professional lives it's not just about about leadership it's not just about um you know our kind of personal growth it's really about all those things so like a more holistic approach yeah it's more holistic and um but still very like welcoming and fun like it's just a really amazing conference (laughs) so um this year george you've heard it ignite if you haven't gone to ignite your influence be sure you go and if you know the Friday night celebration where we give out awards and recognize yes. leaders in our community that are making a difference. Yep. That is just an opportunity for the entire community to come together and, and celebrate that work. And so we had a lot of support. Mm-hmm. We had support from the university. We went out and garnered, you know, support from the city, the county um, back in 2017 businesses um, because we, we knew we needed to have that kind of multi-pronged approach, both looking mm. at, helping women know that there was an opportunity to engage if sure. they wanted to in in ways and understand and learn what those were and also help companies and our other organizations recognize ways that they could start uh, to yes. build out. Mm-hmm. So we were kind of taking a lot of the work that the Women's Leadership Institute was doing and the Utah Women in Leadership Project and saying, okay, and a lot of other AEW, you know, yeah. UN, all these groups, and saying, okay, how do we create a space in St. George where we are driving that right. for our community? Yeah, and that's really, you know, a, a, taking ownership of it. Yeah, for taking yourselves. ownership yeah. of it for ourselves, and so it's you know still going. I mean, we have an amazing board, and it's getting more and more diverse, both age and racially and ethnically and experientially that's and exciting so it's really cool because it it reflects the community yeah. a lot you know it continues to reflect the community as the community grows and changes yeah so it, and it's just fun it's an amazing group of <laughs> people i'm mean, not just women like we have lots of guys who show up to the mm. monthly influence circle events and they've just started a book club and so they're doing a lot of really cool things but it's all about connecting yeah. You know, and connecting in and knowing that we have a lot of women who move to St. George and don't know anyone. Mm-hmm. So this is an opportunity for them to come in and meet people. And yeah, as it's you know, growing. Exactly. For sure. As mm-hmm. it's growing and just another avenue for connection and support and yeah. really elevating each other. I love you know? that. Yeah. Um, so we've done an event, the Urgency of Women's Leadership mm-hmm. in Southern Utah for a couple of years now. And one of the things we often talk about is uh, women two things. You mentioned visibility with your awards. I've come to learn that leadership is part visibility. Mm -hmm. Like people have to see you in order to follow you. And then the other thing is um, mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So many women are leaders in their own right. But if you ask them, are you a leader? They'll say no, (laughs) right? Even though they just organized (laughs) the whole 5k for the junior high or whatever it is. So uh, shifting that mindset that Women can be leaders, whether that's in their home or their communities or their professions. Yep. Um, I feel like win helps with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I, you know, with a bolder way forward, mm-hmm. that's a big piece of what we're trying to accomplish with our leadership development spoke. I'm one of the co-leads for that with Jamie Shaw from yeah. Win, who's actually yeah. the new Win board chair. Hey, for me. So shout out. Really strong connection. <laughs> okay. She's brilliant. And um, yeah, let's dive into that. Why don't you tell people about that spoke and. Yeah. Your vision for it. So I think the cool thing with Boulder Way Forward and going back to what you were talking about in terms of just at least the leadership development spoke yeah. is, you know, we just launched a new 
initiative. It's a bold Utah leader spotlight. Okay. And the whole goal is to bring visibility it's huge, to yeah. women leaders and also to help other women see themselves as leaders yes. in roles that they may or may not otherwise have yep. recognized were leadership. And Jamie tells this great story about um, her mom, actually, was she came to Ignite this year. And her mom was like, oh, you know, I've, I've never really thought of myself as a leader. And Jamie said, my jaw hit the ground. My mom has been on city council. She has had all these leadership roles in, you know, yeah. in church. What is a leader? Like all this stuff. And her, her mom just never really thought about herself right. in that way. Right. And so that even at her mom's age, this beautiful age, she was like, oh, I can see myself a little differently. Mm. And so I, you're absolutely right. Visibility and our mindset or our, our willingness, mm -hmm. I guess, to recognize, because it's not about an ego thing. No, or we, a title. It's, no, it's not about mm -hmm. that. It's it, But it is very empowering when we start to allow ourselves to say, I'm actually really good at that. Mm. And I could actually, I'm, I'm stepping in already to make a difference, or I could step in and make a difference. And then once we do, we go, oh. Well, that was actually a leadership activity. You know, mm. I was actually being a leader in that role. And sometimes that's a big jump for yeah. women. They're happy to do it, but we don't want the credit. We don't want the recognition. We don't want the visibility. We're behind the scenes. Yeah. We yeah. Just so many women say, I, I do well behind the scenes. Yeah. And and that's okay. You can lead from behind yeah. just as effectively as you can lead from in front. Yeah. It's know? almost or like from we, next to one another. We have to shift what the very word of leadership yeah. means, right? Yeah. Which is why I love all these different stories of people coming out of what a leader looks like. Because mm -hmm. I think sometimes we have this idea in our head of what it is. And it doesn't have to be limited to that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And so with our spotlights and with the Boulder Way Forward Leadership Development Spoke, you yeah. know, our goal is to just have more women in leadership positions right. in any Across setting. the board. Yep, any yeah. setting they choose. And that, that's twofold. That's okay. the structural and the cultural aspect okay. of what keeps women from moving into that space or, you know, whatever that, that looks like on that side, the kind of the external, okay. and then there's the internal. So the yeah. visibility and the mindset, like you were saying, there's the mindset of actually I, I, I can see myself as a leader. And so many times, and you kind of alluded to this, women, we just did a survey in the fall, and women would say others, I, I like I aspire to be a leader was okay on the, on the you know, like <laughs> it was like a five, you know, five to six, I can't remember exactly. But then others see me as a leader way higher. Really? And the one group that was really stood out was um, parents. So people who mm, had children. So they didn't self-identify as a leader, but right. they felt like other people yes. thought they were leaders. Yes. So the people that weren't parents had a higher aspiration to be leaders. Mm. The people who were parents ha said more, pe <laughs> more people saw them, higher higher. Maybe because by the time you're a parent, you know that you don't know everything. Right. Like you're like, it's I'm a, not a leader. I'm just surviving day by day. It is such an interesting dynamic. Yeah. It's going to be really fun to follow, you know, that particular Track that research out. question as as we go forward with it. But the leadership, that's really what the leadership development is focused yeah. about. It's about just having more women and girls in leadership roles in any setting across the state, whatever that looks like for them. And um, that's just because we know it supports, you know, the research supports it. Yeah. The, the perspectives are important. The experience is important. Um, we don't all look the same. We don't all think the same. And we need that diversity of yeah. thought and experience in, in all of our settings. Yeah. To be the best we can be as organizations and communities. So I think so, too. Yeah. Um, I think that when we're healthy organizations and communities, like more people thrive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And when we're when we're open to lifting each other, I think that's a big piece of it. You know, helping. That was one of the things we really wanted to accomplish with Win okay. was this space where women knew they would be lifted up mm. and they could show up however they were. On that day, in that moment, they didn't have to put on a mask or, mm -hmm. you know, act a certain way to be there. They, It was just like, no, you are welcome here no matter where you are in your life right now and no matter what's going on with you. Yeah. And, and that kind of creating that space mm -hmm. for them to be able to just show up as they were, it, it, it didn't exist. You know, at that mm -hmm. time, at least, it was there were a lot of expectations around how you acted as a woman mm -hmm. in in some settings in Southern Utah and what your role was and what was appropriate, you know, and those didn't always align with <laughs> right. the women that wanted to get in there and make a difference. And and that wasn't just for us. I mean, it had been happening yeah. for a while. Like I said, we had a strong foundation 
we also had a really strong foundation of really great men and a lot of allies yeah, who were very supportive mm-hmm. and, you know, were, were part of the reason why we were able to get it off the ground in the first place. And then also part of the reason why it's been successful going forward. Yeah. So I do feel like there is a consecra- concentrated group of women who are moving things forward in St. George and it seems to grow every year. And I just, I'm so happy about that. Yeah. Um, in whatever way is best for St. George. Exactly. Well, yeah. and even, you know, you mentioned the urgency of women's leadership, like getting to be involved in that um, from the very beginning and, mm-hmm. and real women run, we would do our yep. events down there. Um, and Wynn was always involved in those and being able to say, no, come to our community and let's collaborate. Yeah. Let's all work together. Yeah. And then not having, you know, like, oh, we're the only event. You can't have that event over right. there. It's like, no, right. come on in. And Let's having, have all the events. Yeah, having, having <laughs> yeah. the urgency of women's leadership increased the amount of women who are coming out and engaging yeah. and learning and questioning. And that's that's what we want. Like, it's totally an abundance mentality from women's perspective. And if you I look at that. our, you know, our, our values for the organization, it's very clear. Nice. That that is. And, and, and the organization walks its talk. So... I appreciate that. And yeah. that's, we tried to work that in so that that will stay. Um, even if, you know, as, as leadership as changes, things changes and things like yeah. that. Yeah. It can always change. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Um, so we came down as part of tool one year and did some leadership interviews and you were <laughs> one of the people we interviewed and it was interesting. Um, you talked about Pat Jones, the founder of the women's leadership Institute and talked about how because she has let out, she kind of gave an example of how to do that. Mm-hmm. Will you speak more about that and what that looks like or how that impacted you? Yeah, I I feel like I was just this, I don't know, sponge when it came to kind of getting to meet Pat and, you know, some other women leaders that I really admire. She always shows up with grace and um, warmth. Mm -hmm. And she always makes, I don't know, it's hard to explain. She has this really unique way about her. Yeah. And so I, I was not, I was impressed, but not intimidated Mm. by her. And I thought that was such a neat combination, you know, to be able to be like, there's this woman who's so accomplished. And I mean, I met her when we were just starting when, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and, in the hard scuffle of getting an organization going and like learning and having these amazing people that comes down to St. George, you know, to help us kind of figure it out. And, um, anyway, so she just, uh, I think that her influence in my life as a woman and also as a woman leader has really gotten, even that much stronger over the last several years. Hmm. You know, I've gotten to know her better. Mm-hmm. She's been on my podcast. Yeah. Um, we've become friends. And the thing that I've noticed with her, even more than I realized before, yeah. is how much she lifts women around her. Hmm. Um, men too, obviously. But she really takes an interest in you. Mm-hmm. Um, but she also doesn't do it in a way that seems superfluous or, Hmm. you know, it's genuine. Yes. It's very genuine. And she kind of meets you where you are. She doesn't ask you for too much, but she'll push you a little bit, Mm. you know, this might be a good opportunity for you. Or have you thought about that? Or have you met this person or whatever? And, um, so having, having that, I have a couple of people in my life, um, that are offering, really beautiful gifts Mm -hmm. like that. And one of the things that I'm finding is, you know, I've been in the leadership role for a long time and and done all these really cool things and everything. And now I get to receive that. And so stepping into this conscious and intentional reception of that kind of love and friendship and support, Mm -hmm. it's really a cool space. Like I'm giving myself the opportunity to do that. Like, Cause it's not easy. Like my ego's like, Oh, you don't, you don't need that. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I need, well, I need it was this. interesting because I, what I thought where I thought you were going is now that you've been a leader for so long, you'll turn around and mentor others. 
But I love, I'm sure you do that, but I love that you're like, no, I've been a leader a long time. I love like the companionship and the wisdom and the experience of other women leaders. Yeah. And absolutely. I love that word receive, right? Yes. Be able to receive that. Yeah. That's it is. beautiful. It is a reception. And it's not something like I've always had mentors. Yeah. And, you know, I've all, I mean, I always have mentored. I love it as yeah. long as I can remember. I think that's such an important role, especially yeah. that women play. And especially in getting more girls into leadership. Like we right. have to have that mentoring um, and that, that lifting. But it was a conscious decision for me. Hmm. To say, am I going to accept this help mm. or am I going to be too proud mm. to is feel it... like I, I, or whatever that is, yeah. you know, yeah. like, or, or do I feel like I, I've been there, done that. I'm the giver. Oh, I don't have interesting. to be, I'm the giver. I don't have to be the receiver. And what I've learned is, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be a lifelong receiver because intellectually I knew that that's important, but now I kind of know in my heart you know, mm. that, that that's, I know how to do it, I guess. I've learned how to, I've learned how to do it. And so that's one of the gifts that Pat has given me is the opportunity to learn how to be on the receiving end of that mm. kind of support and mentorship and, and love and friendship in a professional, you know, in a professional way as well. I mean, I don't know. I don't think as women we categorize or compartmentalize. At least yeah. I don't. Everything's really all mixed for me. Like I yep. used to have a professional <laughs> self and a personal self, and now I'm just like, it's all, it's right. all there. Like I, right. what you see is it what you all get. shows up. All yeah, the time. it all shows up, and I'm, I'll speak a little differently, you know, in yeah. professional situations than I than I will at home with my friends. Mm -hmm. But it's still all me. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna which be which is a good thing, right? It's like, a good thing. And authentic. It's hard to get there. Ah, it's hard to get there because I feel like we're programmed to not in some ways. I feel like that's changing, but yeah. yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, we know that Utah's culture is a beautiful mix yes. of so many variables. Yep. And so learning how to navigate that as our authentic selves, again, is an opportunity to get yeah. to know ourselves better. Yep. We can be on autopilot and figure it out, which I was on autopilot for a long time. You know, I didn't really think about. I thought about my career, but I wasn't really thinking about myself as a leader or mm. projecting into the future what that could look like for me mm. or what kind of a leader I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And when I went to grad school and had my first leadership course, I was like, ding, I'm not just mm. a manager. I'm not just someone who's, you know, got all these direct reports or whatever responsible for a department. I'm actually in a leadership position. Like I am a leader at this point, whether I like it or not. And I have to decide what kind of leader I'm going to be. And that means what kind of person I'm going to be. Yeah. And, you know, all yeah, because they're all melded into one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're all melded into one. And so I think that that piece of it is a when we when we get to a point where we can allow ourselves to reconcile mm -hmm. all the different facets of ourselves and not feel like we have to compartmentalize in, in you know, I'm speaking in generalities, of but, course. but not feel like we have to compartmentalize so much. Um, that that makes it so much easier. And I love that our workplaces, for instance, are starting to recognize that, you know, we're starting to have more family friendly policies. We're starting mm. to have more flexible schedules. We're starting to, you know, meet people where they are so that we can retain all this amazing talent yeah. and keep this amazing, you know, these these leadership sort of pools and pipelines going. Because you, you're, you can't just have rigid structures and expect it to meet everyone's needs. That's just not how the world works. That's how it's been for a long time. And it is interesting to watch that shift happen yes, and begin. Is. Like, it is interesting. I, um, I heard once that the phrase, I am, whatever you put after that, mm -hmm. is very powerful, right? Yes. So when you say, I am a leader, that's very identifying. And to be able to claim that. I'm like, my my brain is spinning, like all the activities we could do in our core folks of like, <laughs> how do you claim your leadership, exactly. right? Exactly. Ooh, I'm going to spin on that too. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, Let's right? Let's collaborate on yeah. that. One. Yeah. Um, okay. So as we wrap up, I want to talk about you as a storyteller mm. because that plays both into mindset and visibility. Okay. Um, and I've watched you facilitate panels. You're very thoughtful. I mean, you have great when someone says something and then you come back and restate it. You're very thoughtful in that way. 
So what interviews have impacted you the most and why? Oof. Gosh. And these can be personal. They can be professional. Yeah. I, it's really hard to choose. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, I'll give a personal example. It's not really an interview, but conversations with my daughter okay. impact me deeply. Hmm. She's almost 17. Okay. Um, she is just this wise soul. She's so kind and thoughtful and super smart. And, you know, I'm not always proud of the behavior that I have in front of her <laughs> sometimes. You know, right. I'm like, dang it, that was not my best mom moment. I am human, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So again, I have to get to the place of forgiveness. But I love that we have a relationship where she can give me feedback mm. and say mm. to me, hey, what do you think about this? And, you know, one of the one of the funnest, most fun things I got to do with her, um, I have my Gallup Strengths Coach oh, yeah. certification. Mm -hmm. And so I, she took that assessment and we were going through it. Uh, and she was so fun. She was like, Mom, you're so good at this. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that praise means more to me <laughs> than anything else. You know, but especially from a daughter who like yeah, knows you, daughter, yeah. who knows me. And for her to say, "Ooh, I don't I don't know that side of you necessarily. Mm. But it really she was like, I, I wouldn't have thought about it that way. And, you know, that's yeah, that's actually true. And mm. so it was a really fun conversation. And I mean, that's why I love the coaching stuff, because it's yeah. it's a blast to have those ahas. So that from a personal standpoint is really neat, those conversations with her, because she gives me feedback in a way that I can, I'm willing to listen mm -hmm. and I trust her feedback even as young as she sure. is. So I think that those are opportunities again, you know, she kind of mentors me in some ways, even yeah. though she's a way younger. Um, professionally, I love, I love two things. I love the personal conversations in mm -hmm. our podcasts. I think they are a blast and I love learning people's stories. And helping weave, you know, these things yeah. in. You're really good at this, too. Um, I love doing panel conversations. Hmm. I love the mix of experience. <laughs> you never know thought. what you're going to exactly. get. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love the on, like, you have to be on point to navigate mm -hmm. whatever someone says. And it's same in, like, workshops, you know, facilitating workshops or um, those kinds of things. It's just a really... I like being in the moment, I guess. So it's not so much about yeah. the person or, you know, even if it's someone like with Pat, when she came on my podcast, I wasn't nervous to be sitting across the table with, from her. I was excited, mm. you know, about what I was going to learn from her sure. in that conversation sure. and what kind of wisdom we were going to get to share with our audience. And so that's what I love about the conversations and the interviews. Mm -hmm. Um and I am surprised, I don't know why I'm surprised, and deeply grateful that people show up authentically and mm. share, and share, you know, like, yes. it's just a really, I think it says something about you. I've had a lot of, a lot of my podcast guests have said, you know, you make me feel really comfortable. Mm. It makes it easy. And I'm feeling that with you. <laughs> like, I'm so it glad. Feels, it, so that makes a difference. So yeah. I feel like going back to that giving and receiving piece, you know, if I can kind of give that and, and create that kind of a space, then I get to receive and the audience gets to receive the wisdom and insights from whomever the person being interviewed yeah. is. And it's, they're all so different. I mean, I go back and listen to, you know, even my podcast recordings and all the guests, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot she said that. And oh yes, I learned that. And yeah. um, the silver linings of everyone in a community listening to each other. Mm -hmm. um, that really helps keep the community strong and connected. And I didn't, That's I, I didn't I anticipate thinking. that with Powerlane. Yeah, community. yeah, that was really one of the things that came out of it that I didn't expect was this feeling of connectedness that my listeners had with the people I was interviewing mm -hmm. and me. But especially they'd be like, oh, I've known that person for years and I didn't know that about them. Yeah. Or I heard this. And I, as soon as I listened to the podcast, I was like, are you kidding? I had no idea. And I called them up right then and said, okay, we have to go to lunch and talk mm. about this. I need to learn more about this, you know? And so those, again, opportunities for connection, um, it's a special kind of way to do it when we're, when we're just having those conversations. Yeah. I love how you said that. Um, my guess is you have learner in your Gallup string. Um, I do, <laughs> but not in my top 10. Oh, interesting. I know. Okay. I have, I, but I have, you know, a lot of them are similar. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and, and I have 
my top one is strategic. Hmm. Then ideation, then connectedness, uh-huh. then arranger, then intellect. Those are my top five. Interesting. Yes. Okay, I can see all of those. So it's it's fun to navigate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that I want to close on that I think was most beautiful about where you went with that was we often talk about, uh, you know, the pipeline and the pathways for leadership in Utah. Mm-hmm. We need to get more girls involved, right? All the way through. My, I have a daughter, and when she hit junior high, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or it's a real thing that they navigate. Yeah. So we turn around and we look to them and we try and create these things for them. But what I loved about what you said is you turned to her and she created it for you. That was really beautiful, right? Because I think that most mother-daughter relationships can do that and get the feedback and grow and have that connection. Um, And again, it goes back to the word receive, right? Receive it. And then it really like sinks in your heart. Like I really felt that. So thank you for being so personal and for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you. She might not be excited that I shared it, but she she knows her mom, so she won't be surprised. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really cool to have the opportunities in our in our worlds Mm -hmm. to have people who who will be just honest with you in a really kind way yeah and sometimes it's hard to hear it and sometimes it's hard to be grateful for it and to receive it um but in the end it's always worth it because i'd rather know it than not exactly and if it's delivered you know Brene brown always talks about being clear Mm -hmm. clear clarity is kind yeah being direct is kind being direct is kind. Direct that is, is kind. so huge. Don't beat around the bush. Don't yeah. sugarcoat it. But be kind. Well, and not in just how the, you're talking about. Not it. just the negative things, but how she said, "No, mom, you are this. Yeah, exactly. You are a leader. These are, are your qualities. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. And I have to be grateful for that too, because also I think as women, and maybe maybe guys do this, but I don't have a guy's brain, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> we focus on the negative way mm-hmm. more than the positive, right? Like, oh. Out of that entire conversation, I took this away. Right. And so going back to your question about like my favorite interview or whatever, mm-hmm. it's just, it's it's the ability to be positive in that. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things I like about facilitating conversations too, is that there could be a really tough negative thing that, that needs to be addressed. Right. But the way that we go about addressing it matters. can change the outcome. Yeah. It, yeah. It matters. And so being thoughtful and intentional and, you know, educated about that and sometimes you wing it, but... <laughs> You wing it from a place of trust and compassion (laughs) and love and usually turns out okay. Oh, well, thank you so much. It is a pleasure. I appreciate you. you sharing. Thank you so much. It's great to be here.